Hey, welcome back to the book of Exodus. Uh, Pharaoh and Moses are going to meet here at the Nile, and we're kind of on plague one. Let's see what happens. We're at chapter 7, verse 19 to 21. Then the Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, Take your staff and stretch out your hand over the waters of Egypt, over their rivers, over their streams, and over their pools, and over all their reservoirs of water, that they may become blood. And there will be blood throughout all the land of Egypt, both in vessels of wood and in vessels of stone. So Moses and Aaron did, even as the Lord had commanded. And he lifted up the staff and struck the water that was in the Nile, in the sight of Pharaoh and in the sight of his servants. And all the water that was in the Nile was turned to blood. The fish that were in the Nile died, and the Nile became foul, so that the Egyptians could not drink water from the Nile. And the blood was through all the land of Egypt. So Moses goes out, follows God's instruction, and there's Pharaoh, and it all happens just as uh, just as God set it up to happen. So the water here becomes undrinkable. The fish that are in the water die. I mean, this is a this is an economic catastrophe. This is a, a very heavy hand that God lays on the Nile, and yet this is the first in a series of what are going to be intensify ramping up plagues as they get more and more severe. This is just number one. This is this is the starting line, but it's a pretty strong one for these people. And you might have noticed here that as we look at these passages yesterday and today and so on, this is going to affect all the drinking water. This is affecting the river, the pools, the uh, the water in you know in jars and vessels. Uh, this is this is it'd be pretty hard if you suddenly had no drinkable water for a period of several days. That would be bad stuff. Well, that's what they get. That's what God gives on plague one. Uno. Now, we should understand here that when it says the water is turned to blood, that doesn't mean it's turned into full-on, scientifically definable hemoglobin. In, in, in Hebrew, blood is not only uh, human blood, but it also represents the color of blood. So this isn't necessarily real blood. This is turned red like blood, and it has some pretty extraordinary effects. There's also a, a, there's a biological phenomena also called red flagellates that are little bacteria that come out and they have a deleterious effect. You've probably heard of stuff like the red tide and, and they can make water undrinkable. Some people say this is some phenomenon of that. Another explanation that's been given kind of in this range of like naturalistic explanations is that further upstream the Nile, there was some extraordinary rain and that cut loose a whole bunch of mud. The mud comes floating down the river and it's got more iron in it, so it's red. So these are, these are some explanations that have been given. But uh, did you notice that when we read the text that this is done in the sight of Pharaoh? Okay, so Pharaoh is there and it happens in, in, in a matter of minutes, right? Pharaoh is there at the Nile and it happens, it's visible, Everybody sees it. it. It's instantaneous. So I don't think you can explain it away as just some kind of some natural business that's just happening. Now, here's one other thought, too. Doesn't it make perfect sense? Isn't there a perfect irony in it that God would perhaps use the very elements, the elements which, which the Egyptians have deified, you know, the river, every different thing is a god or connected to some god. Doesn't it make sense that God would take those very things, like there's a frog god that's coming up, uh, that's going to go sour. <laughs> all, all of it. All of it is. Uh, so God will turn the very things that they see as deities that are their, their caregivers, their helpers that they pray to or that they uh, worship. God would turn those very things around 180 degrees and show them that, that there's no power in those things, that they're worshiping hot air, that there's nothing there. And, and, and it looks like God is going to do that very thing. He's going to, one by one, he's going to overturn the, the so-called gods of Egypt and he's going to show his superiority, Yahweh, the God of the Hebrews, his superiority over these alleged gods of the Egyptians. And so that's what's going on. We're in the early stages now, and God is going to overturn because they have opposed him and they have downgraded his people. And now God is coming to their rescue. Let's see what happens tomorrow morning as well.